Hi everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how I created this dill or football themed tumbler. The one that I'm doing today, I only added the football field markers or the field markers to the tumbler. I didn't add the names. I just wanted y'all to see the overall look of the field. So while doing yours, don't forget to add some decals or some names. Just go ahead and customize it whichever way you like. All of my materials will be posted in my description below like always. And I will also have my help guides for all of the beginner viewers. The main materials that you'll be needing for this tumbler are going to be a stainless steel tumbler. I do recommend a tumbler that's the same shape on the top and the bottom. That just makes it easier for the lines to kind of uh, follow up and be more proportioned. You'll be needing some green spray paint. The spray paint that I use is from Krylon. It is Satin Hunter Green. If you have a darker spray paint or more of a grassy looking spray paint, that's fine as well. And then you're going to be needing some dill weed. The dill weed that I have, I purchased it from Publix. I'm sure you can purchase this at any local grocery store or supermarket, or you can uh, even get this online on Amazon or anywhere. So if you don't have any green spray paint on hand, what I would do is I would purchase this from a Walmart, the dill weed, and then I would take this to the spray paint section and kind of match up the green uh, spray paint with the dill weed, just to help you out a little bit. The rest of my materials will be listed in my description below. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started on this dill weed football tumbler. Today, I will be using a 15 ounce tumbler from makerflowcrafts.com. Again, I will have their website posted in my description below. I sanded this tumbler with a 180 grit sanding block, and then I wiped it down with 91% alcohol. You can use 99% alcohol as well. And then I went ahead and I spray painted this tumbler. As you can see, it doesn't have to be a pretty spray paint job. I actually uh, got the spray paint wet here. Uh, you're gonna be covering this up. You just want a nice base on here. The spray painted that I use for this tumbler is by Krylon, and it is Satin Hunter Green. And then I let my spray paint tumbler dry for about 25 to 30 minutes. Once my spray paint has dried on the tumbler, I'm now going to apply my dill weed to the tumbler using the epoxy method. So a lot of people who do tumblers, if you apply your glitter with the epoxy method, that's how you'll apply your dill weed. I went ahead and I mixed my epoxy off screen and I mixed about, so I, I will be using about five uh, milliliters of epoxy. So that's about two and a half milliliters of part A and two and a half milliliters of part B. Since this tumbler is so small, I might use about three to four. I'm not too sure yet. I always like to make more than what is needed just in case. I'd rather have more than too little. You want to add a very thin layer of epoxy to your tumbler. Basically, you want enough epoxy on your tumbler for the amount of the adhesive. So the reason to apply this epoxy to this tumbler is to act as adhesive. So you don't want the dill weed to absorb the, or the epoxy to absorb the dill. So I go ahead and I turn off my tumbler and I just take my finger and I dip my finger into my, um, my cup of epoxy and then I spread the epoxy on the tumbler and I make it very, very thin. Again, you just want enough to have this as an adhesive. So how I like to think about this, how I used to think about this is whenever I used to use spray adhesive or Mod Podge, I'd make a very thin amount. And that's how I would compare the amount of epoxy I put on a tumbler for adhesive as how much the spray would be. So if you do spray adhesive your glitter, that very, very thin amount of spray adhesive is just enough for that glitter. So think of that um, with the epoxy. And you also wanna get the bottom. And this does take some time. And like you, like you see, I turn off my turner. That's, that's the amount of epoxy that I'm using. That's the little amount of epoxy that, that you need on the tumbler. So if you turn off your turner and your epoxy is running down your tumbler, then you are using way too much. Just go ahead and thin it out just like I am. I'm applying a little bit of pressure with my fingers and I'm thinning it out. And if you have a lot of excess on your glove, I just take my finger and I wipe the rim of my uh, Dixie cup of epoxy and I kind of wipe off the epoxy. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I will return. I've applied all of my epoxy to my tumbler and then I'm now going to turn on my turner. Again, if you have your turner off, 
and your epoxy runs down, you have too much epoxy and just go ahead and get that nice, smooth, thin layer of epoxy on your tumbler. Once it's on my tumbler, I'm now going to apply my dill weed. Now you see I have this whole container, full container of dill weed. So I went ahead and I put it inside of a Dixie cup. This just allows me to have more control of the spice or the dill um, because I'm very heavy handed. So I want to naturally just dump this entire container on this, tum on this tumbler and you don't wanna do that. Whenever I first did this tumbler, I just dumped all of the dill onto the tumbler and it made it very, very hard to epoxy over. So I have this small container of uh, dill and then I'm going to dip my fingers in here and I'm going to pinch it like I would salt or pepper and just put it on the tumbler. So this might be very tedious, but whenever I did this the first time, the first couple times, I kept just dumping the, the dill on the tumbler and in the long run, it did not pay off. So I, I'd rather add a little bit at a time than just dump it off, dump it out. And this is going to help you uh, avoid sanding your tumbler. It kinda is comparison to chunky, chunky glitter. Whenever you pour chunky glitter out all at once, your, your tumbler becomes very bumpy and you have to sand it. It's kind of the same concept with uh, dill. So again, I'm just sticking my finger in my Dixie cup and I'm pinching it like I would salt or pepper. And then I'm just kind of um, spreading it on the tumbler and I'm letting it fall wherever it wants to fall. Make sure you're um, having a full covered tumbler. It's gonna take some time to do this. I also added some catch paper underneath my tumbler. So whenever I run out of this uh, dill, I'll go ahead and put the excess uh, dill that fell on the paper and I'll put it inside of my Dixie cup and just reuse it. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this part and then I will return. You wanna make sure you get the bottom of the tumbler, so I'm going to stop my turner. I'm going to pat off or pat on my uh, tumbler arm, and that's just gonna get all the excess dill off of the tumbler. And then now I'm going to just apply, just like as I would, I just dumped it out just to make it easier, and I'm just going to sprinkle the dill on the bottom of the tumbler, just like as I would glitter. So I'm just, what I do is I just aim for the bottom up here and then it naturally falls. Gravity just takes over and then it falls towards the middle and it covers the entire uh, bottom of the tumbler. And then once you're satisfied with that, just go ahead and put it on the turner. And then we can go ahead and fill in these kind of blank spaces on the tumbler. So I don't know if the camera is catching it, but you can see kind of the spray paint peeking through the dill. So what I do is, uh, again, I have a very thin layer of epoxy on my tumbler so I can turn off my turner and I'll be confident enough that it's not going to drip down. None of this is going to drip down if I just have this tumbler, this tumbler turner off for a couple of minutes or so. So I see some bare spots here and what I do is I sprinkle, I just sprinkle some dill here and then I kind of pat it down to make sure that it's really sticking to the adhesive, uh, to the uh, epoxy, excuse me. So just go around the tumbler and anybody who's very anal about, you know, getting every single spot like myself, uh, go around the tumbler and just look for any bare spots and go ahead and kind of uh, pat it down because maybe my epoxy's already dried or I just didn't put enough epoxy or it just isn't sticking for some reason. So I like to kind of just pat down. I'm not rubbing because if I'm rubbing on my tumbler, I'm going to rub the dill off of the tumbler. So go ahead and just pat it on. Some's gonna fall off, that's fine, but you're gonna start noticing just a fuller covered tumbler with the dill. And uh, this is why I paint my tumbler green. I try to paint it either like a dark forest green or a green, so if it does peek through, it doesn't look bad. It's still going to give that, uh, that football field, field effect. So again, I'm just sprinkling, I'm not dumping anything. I'm taking my time, making sure that the tumbler is completely covered with the dill. And then once I'm satisfied, we'll move on to the next step. 
So I think I'm satisfied with how much dill is on my tumbler. You can see the green poking through, but that is fine. Again, it, it's a football field, so it just makes it look more um, authentic and it has kind of that two-tone color to it. So I don't know if you noticed me, but I went ahead and I tapped off on my tumbler arm. That just removes any excess dill from the tumbler. And then once I've done that, I'm now going to kind of treat this like chunky glitter. So if you can see in the camera, the dill is kind of sticking up and it's not as smooth or as flat as I would want it to be. And remember, we're gonna to have to epoxy over this. So that's going to be the next step after I do this. So I wanna make this process as easy as possible for me whenever I'm going through all the steps. So what I do is I first take my gloved finger and then I go on the rim. So you can turn on your turner or to make it easier, you can turn it off. And I just let my gloved finger stay on the rim while it turns so I can get any of that uh, dill off of the rim before I apply the other coat of epoxy. So it's a nice flush rim and there's nothing kind of peeking out or peeking over the rim. And again, that's just gonna help me in the future. I don't have to sand the tumbler as much. And then what I do is I turn off my turner again, kind of put it on the football, turn off my turner, and then I just look at kind of some spots that's kind of poking up, just like as I would chunky glitter. And then I just push down. I'm pushing straight down and up, up and down. I'm not rubbing, I'm not um, doing it left and right. I'm just going down on the tumbler and up. The reason for that is because I want the dill to really stick to the tumbler. And when I epoxy over, I want to do little to no sanding at all. I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos. I do not like sanding tumblers at all. So I'm trying to make this dill stick cl as closely as I can to this tumbler. So when I epoxy over, it's going to be very, very smooth. And you're going to feel it with your hands or your finger. You're really gonna, you're gonna feel it and you're going to notice it. It's gonna lay nice and flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then we will return. For my next step, I'm going to allow my tumbler to uh, spin on the turner for about three to four hours. And then once it's done spinning, I'll go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and mix my epoxy off camera and then I'll return. I'm going to add how much milliliters of epoxy I use on this video. I make a big batch and then I do other tumblers. So make sure you look on screen to see how much epoxy I use for this 15 ounce tumbler. I'm finished uh, mixing my epoxy off camera. If I do sound funny, it's because I have my respirator mask on. So I do apologize. I went ahead and I mixed 30 milliliters of epoxy. That's 15 milliliters of part A and 15 milliliters of part B. If you want to learn how to mix epoxy properly, I will be linking one of my YouTube videos in my description below. I'm now going to turn on my cup turner and then I'm going to apply my epoxy to my tumbler. You are going to notice that you're going to need a lot more epoxy for the dill than you would um, fine glitter or inks it's because the epoxy or the dill absorbs the epoxy a lot more than the other materials. Just gonna apply it anyway. All I'm doing is I'm pouring the epoxy on top of my tumbler and you can stick your finger in your tumbler or your cup and then uh, grab it out and kind of pull the epoxy from the, the Dixie cup. You can go up and down on your tumbler, you can go left and right, whichever way is more comfortable for you. Apply it that way. There's no rhyme or reason on how I do this step. And make sure you get the bottom and again, I use 50, or 15 milliliters of part A and 15 milliliters of part B, totaling 30 milliliters of epoxy. And this is a 15 ounce tumbler and it looks like I'm going to be using all of this epoxy. Once you're satisfied with how much epoxy you've uh, applied to your tumbler, 
You're now going to allow your tumbler to spin on its turner for about four to six hours. Once, this is, once it has been spinning on the turner for four to six hours, you're then going to turn off your turner and you're going to let it air dry up to 24 hours. I always uh, allow 24 hours to, uh, for my tumblers to air dry just in case. I know a lot of people do 12 to 15 hours, so that might be okay. Um, that's fine. So if you do want to wait 12 to 15 hours, the main thing is make sure your epoxy is completely dry. You do not want your tumbler to be sticky. You don't want it to be wet. You want it to be hard whenever you knock on it and you want it to be dry. I don't know if my camera is picking up my tumbler as uh, well as I'm seeing it. But I do notice a lot of dill peeking through my epoxy, so it's not going to be 100% smooth surface. That is okay. I'm going to fix that on this next step when I return. But it is very important, going back to that first uh, step in the beginning, of make sure you're pressing down your dill to the epoxy. Because if your dill was not pressed down all the way, then whenever you apply this epoxy to the tumbler, you're going to see the tumbler a lot more bumpy than what it should be. So right now, if you could see, I have a generally smooth tumbler. That's what you want to see. And there's going to be a little bit sticking up. That's okay, we'll go ahead and correct that later. If you are working with a 15 ounce tumbler or 14, 16 ounce tumbler, and you happen to mix 32, 35 milliliters of epoxy, that's okay. I'd rather have you more than less. Again, the dill really does absorb the epoxy. So you wanna have a little more on the tumbler than less. I'm now going to let my tumbler spin on the turner, then air dry, and I'll see y'all in about 24 hours. Hey guys, I'm back, and it's been about 24 hours since I've allowed my tumbler to spin and air dry or air cure on the turner. Again, the reason why I wait 24 hours is just to make sure that all of the epoxy has been dried and completely cured. Um, you can do it 15, 18 hours, that's fine, but I just make uh, play it safe, and I always just wait 24 hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my tumbler off the turner and you're going to see that it is very um, bumpy. It's not as bumpy as, as you would think, but um, it's going to be a little bumpy because it is dill and it's hard to kind of make every part of the dill stick to the tumbler. So what I do from here is um, I go ahead and I sand this down. This one right, this tumbler specifically, it's not as bumpy as what I thought. So this is actually, uh, this came out really, really well. So now I'm gonna take my uh, 220 sanding block or 220 grit sanding block and I'm just going to sand this tumbler and I'm just going to apply light pressure you're going to see the tumbler turn a little gray or foggy that is completely okay you want to go ahead and sand this down all the way uh, the reason why I use a 220 sanding uh, block and not a 180 on this is because I don't want to sand the dill away so a lot of times if you're using a very very um, I guess a lower grit sanding block or paper. Um, if you sand it too hard on a, a low grit paper, it's going to sand the, the dill away and that's, that's the same with um, glitter as well. So you just wanna make sure that you're just applying a little bit of pressure and not too much and you can sand it any way you like. I do not wet my sanding block. It is only personal preference. I know a lot of people do wet their sanding paper or sanding block. However you feel comfortable doing this, go ahead and do it. Also, I do use the sanding block and not paper. The only reason why that is, is so I can have a nice grip on it. The paper, it gets, um, it, it tears, it's, it's just not comfortable in my hand. So I prefer the sanding block and I did purchase this from uh, Lowe's. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we'll move on to the next step. I now have my tumbler sanded and what I do next is I take my 91% alcohol and I spray my tumbler all around. Uh, this gives me, uh, I do this for two reasons. One, so I can see how the tumbler is going to look whenever it's epoxied. So anywhere that I sprayed this 91% alcohol, this is how it's going to look while it's epoxied. Like I said, the fogginess, the whiteness, um, it's going to go away. It's going to become clear. The second reason why I do this is because if you notice I was touching this tumbler I used my hands and uh, 
as you should know that all of the oils from your hands, it does come off of the tumbler very easily. So I just do this for an extra precaution, just so the epoxy, when I apply this again, it doesn't fish eye. Whenever epoxy fish eyes, what happens is it doesn't stick to a surface and it creates kind of holes or it spreads on the tumbler. A lot of times that happens is because you have oils from your hands and you're touching your tumbler and it's not going to stick. So I make sure I give a good spray and I wipe this down very well just to make sure. I'd rather be safe than sorry. After I wiped down my tumbler, I went ahead and I put it back on my tumbler arm uh, very carefully. If you do happen to touch it after you put it on your tumbler arm, go ahead and wipe it down or put it on your arm and then wipe it down, whichever way you want to do it. So now for this next step, it's going to be your choice. So right now, this is an entire epoxy tumbler. It's been curing for at least 24 hours. I can go ahead and decal this and then epoxy over it. I'm not going to do that because on this specific one, I think when I place the decals on, you're going to see the bumpiness underneath the decals. So I know a lot of people, they go ahead and decal this and they, they epoxy it, they finish it, that's fine. But I'm a little bit more uh, particular when it comes to decals and um, if, if you could see the bumpiness underneath them. So for this next step, I'm just going to get a little bit of epoxy, just enough to make a nice coat, a thin enough epoxy. It's not going to be too thick. It's just going to kind of place that even coat over the tumbler. And then I'm gonna let that uh, spin and air cure for at least 24 hours. I went ahead and I mixed my epoxy off camera. The amount of epoxy that I will be using for this uh, 15 ounce tumbler is about 20 milliliters of epoxy. That's 10 milliliters of part A and that's 10 milliliters of part B equaling 20 milliliters. And I think that might be a little bit too much, but that will be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this epoxy and then I will return. I do have some epoxy left over, so I did end up using about 15 uh, milliliters of epoxy instead of the 20 for my 15 ounce tumbler. I'm going to let this uh, spin on the turner for about eight to 10 hours. I'm gonna turn off the turner and then I'll let it sit for another 14 hours, uh, totaling 24 hours of dry or cure time. So I will see y'all then. I'm back with this tumbler and it has been drying for at least 24 hours. And you can see that it is nice and smooth now on my turner. Now, if you do have a little bit of bumps on your tumbler, you can go ahead and sand them out and then re-epoxy another coat of thin uh, epoxy, or you can sand it out and then um, add the decals and then epoxy over. My tumbler has a little bit of uh, bumps from the epoxy or little bubbles uh, on the tumbler from the epoxy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a good sanding. And then once I finish sanding, I'm gonna go ahead and add the decals to the tumbler. Now that I'm done sanding my tumbler, I'm now going to spray and wipe it down with 91% alcohol. You can do this right after you sand or right before you apply your decal to your tumbler. I'm now going to apply the decals, which are going to be uh, the yard lines. I've cut the design out and I just wanted to show y'all how I weed this before I apply it to my tumbler. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but this has a lot of small meticulous lines. I squeeze you all the lines to the paper, allowing the design to stick more to the backing. That way when I peel it up with my weeding tool, the design tends to stick more than pull up and it makes it easier. I'm gonna go ahead and weed this off camera and then I'll return. I weeded my decal and I have also placed my transfer tape on my decal. Before I place the decal on my tumbler, I just wanted to show you how I uh, sized the decal. So what I did was I took my measuring tape and I measured the, the diameter around my uh, tumbler and it was about 10 inches. So I cut about 10 inches of the tumbler or of the decal to fit around the tumbler. This image came as one image or file. What I did was I ungrouped this and I made two separate images. So I did this entire image, I made one and then I attached all this together. So this is attached and this is attached. Then what I did was I um, made sure I wanted the correct size for each one. So I measured from the bottom and the top of my tumbler. 
So from the top, about one and a half or 1.3 inches, and then 1.3, one and a half inches from the bottom as well. So that's how I uh, size this. So this is about 10 inches um, in length, and then each of these are about 1.2, 1.3 inches. So now I'm going to cut this in half because I'm going to place these on opposite ends of the tumbler. And then if I have some excess left over, uh, I'll just go ahead and cut some excess off of the tumbler. One of the hardest parts of this tumbler for me is lining up the bottom decal with the with the top. Now you can um, go ahead and just attach it like this on your Cricut and then space it out that way and then just kind of cut around it. But I don't want to waste um, vinyl, so I kind of eyeball it. So what I do is I put the one, kind of the slash right here, and then I just put it down there. So. The line's kind of lined up here and I just run it down here and then I put it at the bottom. I try to eyeball it as much as I can and then I place it down on the tumbler. I'm trying to create the same space that I had on um, the ledge to the to decal, the same as on the top and the bottom. So I do recommend you taking your time with this and having a paper towel or a, a, a towel down so your tumbler doesn't roll as much. And then I kind of take my tumbler and then my decal and I try to roll it on my tumbler like so. And I'm trying to do this and keep this in the camera so it's not gonna be as straight as I want, but you guys hopefully will do a lot better job at keeping it straight than myself. And you just keep rolling until all of the decal is no longer on the tumbler, like so. And then now I'm gonna fix this part here, and then we will continue. And you see I kinda eyeballed it to line it up. Now for you football freaks out here, I know that this yard line is messed up. This should be mirrored, so this should not be the same. But the fact that it's on a tumbler, I like it like this to uh, make it known to other people what this actually is. Again, this isn't the proper way or the NFL or football way to put yard lines on a tumbler, I understand. I'm just doing it on this tumbler because personally, I like it better whenever uh, the numbers or the, the yard lines are right side up on both sides. So make your tumbler whichever way you want. If you wanna make it more authentic and put it uh, mirrored, go ahead and do that. There's no right or wrong reason to make your own custom tumbler. And here's how the tumbler looks with the yard lines placed on the cup. So from here, you can put your uh, person's name on here, your customer's name, your loved one's name, whoever you are gifting this to's name. Uh, you can put your favorite sports team logo, uh, anything you want in here, a cute football quote, or you can leave it like so. However you wanna make this tumbler, just make it yours. Do keep in mind if you are going to use any football logos, NFL logos, anything uh, similar to that, uh, please be aware of the copyright laws and regulations, so I would go ahead and research that. I do not recommend you uh, putting a sports logo or any logo on your tumbler and reselling it. Uh, with those, I typically just gift. Once you've finished placing your decals on your tumbler, your next step is going to be epoxying your tumbler. My tumbler is about 15 ounces, so I'm going to use about 20 to 25 milliliters of epoxy, so I'm gonna use about 10 to uh, 12 milliliters of part A and then 10 to 12 milliliters of part B, estimating about 20 to 25 milliliters total of epoxy. You're then going to apply your epoxy to your tumbler. Once you apply your epoxy to your tumbler, 
You're then going to let your tumbler air dry or air cure for at least 24 hours before you start the cleanup process. For all of my beginner viewers, I will have numerous amounts of help videos posted in my description below, including how to epoxy a tumbler and how to clean up my rim and inside of my tumbler after I am finished uh, epoxying. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and help videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all next time.